Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The government shutdowns ended after 16 days. Federal employees are being told to return to work today after Congress passed a measure to reopen the government and raise the nation's borrowing limit. President Obama signed the bill last night, narrowly averting today's deadline to raise the debt limit or risk default. The measure passed both the House and Senate after Republicans dropped their efforts to use the legislation to defund the Affordable Care Act. The bill funds the government until January 15th and raises the debt ceiling until February 7th, raising the prospect of another showdown early next year. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid announced the deal, followed by his Republican counterpart Mitch McConnell. The eyes of the world have been in Washington all this week, and that is a gross understatement. And while they witnessed a great deal of political discord, Today, they will also see Congress reach a historic bipartisan agreement to reopen the government and avert a default on the nation's bills. For today, the relief we hope for is to reopen the government, avoid default, and protect the historic cuts we achieved under the Budget Control Act. This is far less than many of us had hoped for, frankly, but it's far better than what some had sought. Senator McConnell said Republicans would continue their efforts to defund the Affordable Care Act. The deal, secured by Reed and McConnell, includes a $3 billion earmark for a dam project in McConnell's home state of Kentucky. McConnell faces a tight re-election bid against a Tea Party-aligned challenger next year. The shutdown entrenched divides in the Republican Party, which were further underscored Wednesday when Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz interrupted news coverage of the deal by holding his own news conference at the same time. Mitch McConnell was speaking on the Senate floor. CNN abruptly switched its coverage to Cruz just as McConnell began to talk. This has been a long, challenging few weeks for Congress and for the country. It's my hope that today we can put some of them. You're still talking on the Senate floor. Do you want to wait until the leader is done and say you right away? During his remarks, Senator Cruz praised House Republicans and criticized the Senate deal to reopen the government. The House of Representatives has taken a bold stance listening to the American people, but unfortunately, the United States Senate has refused to do likewise. The United States Senate has stayed with the traditional approach of the Washington establishment of maintaining the status quo and doing nothing to respond to the suffering that Obamacare is causing millions of Americans. Senator Ted Cruz staged a marathon filibuster last month to defend the Republican push to defund Affordable Care Act, an effort which led to the government shutdown. Cruz's role in the fiscal standoff has prompted his hometown newspaper, The Houston Chronicle, to reverse its endorsement of him. In an editorial, The Chronicle said Cruz's predecessor, Kay Bailey Hutchison, would have been more inclined to negotiate with Democrats and avoid the government shutdown. They wrote, quote, when we endorsed Ted Cruz in last November's general election, we did so with many reservations and at least one specific recommendation, that he follow Hutchison's example in his conduct as a senator. Obviously, he has not done so. Cruz has been part of the problem in specific situations where Hutchison would have been part of the solution, they wrote. The easing of the fiscal standoff has raised hopes Congress may now consider other matters, including a path to citizenship for millions of undocumented people. Groups of demand, groups demanding an end to unprecedented deportations under President Obama have ramped up their call for comprehensive immigration reform recently with a series of direct actions from Washington, D.C. to Arizona. In an interview with Univision's Los Angeles affiliate this week, President Obama vowed to push for reform the day after the fiscal crisis was resolved. Solved. Once that's done, you know, the day after, I'm going to be pushing to say, call a vote on immigration reform. If I have to join with other advocates and uh, continue to speak out on that uh, and keep pushing, uh, I'm going to do so because I think it's really important for the country and now's the time to do it. 